What up African world, it's Home Team here and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Oromo people of Ethiopia. And as always, if you want to support the Home Team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and Home Team merchandise are in the description box below. The Oromo constitute one of the largest and one of the most important ethnic groups of Ethiopia. The Oromo consisted of connected groups who then later broke away and formed new independent subgroups. Initially, two major divisions existed that were named Borana and Barentu after their two mythical ancestors and assumed founders. As early as the 16th century, these groups were powerful confederacies that had integrated many different ethnic groups. The Oromo today practice Christianity, Islam, and some still adhere to their traditional religious belief. The question of their ethnic origin has been subject of scholarly debates for a considerable time, and up to the present, no general agreement on that problem has been solved. It seems an established fact that parts of the Oromo inhabited regions are today occupied by Somali groups. Archaeological findings in the northern part of the Somali country such as burials and funeral grounds are attributed to Oromo. Essentially however, evidence points to a highland origin in what is today the province of Bali and contrary to widely held belief of the past, the Oromo are a genuinely Ethiopian people. The great Oromo migrations of the past have had some controversy largely due to misinformation or a lack of understanding of Oromo history. It's well known that the great Oromo migrations of the 16th century were not due to pressures from other peoples. Another biased perception of Oromo history and society concerns their description as primitive cattle raisers with no knowledge of farming techniques, this incorrect assumption must be revised. One important reason for the massive expansion of the Oromo might have been the Gata system as a central institution of social and political organization which ruled every aspect of life for the Oromo. The Gata system included a classification by age groups that succeeded each other in assuming military, economic, political, and ritual responsibilities every eight years. Every male member of the Oromo society was classified into generation sets and Gata grades. The full cycle of the Gata consisting of 10 grades was divided into two periods of 40 years each. Regardless of his actual age, each Oromo man had to enter the children's class 40 years after his father had done so which meant that father and son were five grades apart at all times. During his lifetime, every Oromo man had to pass 10 classes of eight years each. All those who entered a class together formed a Gata group and remained a military fraternity all their lives. With membership of a certain class, specific duties and rights were associated. The fifth and sixth classes constituted the leadership and warrior class. The political power was actually held by the Gata class and selected officials were only representatives of the ruling set. It was expected that at least once during the eight years of the ruling Gata class, a fighting and killing expedition was undertaken against either big game or enemies which none of the ancestors had raided. And this was perhaps the primary reason for the great migration of the Oromo in the 16th century. Another institution contributed to the dynamic character of the Oromo societies and might have facilitated the process of the migration. This institution consisted of the adoption of an individual or a group of Oromo or non-Oromo origin into an Oromo Gosa, which is traditionally translated as clan or subgroup. Adopted individuals or groups collectively became the so-called sons of the Gosa. Mutual responsibility and obligation were promised, 
and the adopting Gosa thereby increased their numbers. This institution of adoption was inspired by political, economic, and military considerations on both sides. The Romo ethnic identity seems to be fluid due to this social institution. One important feature of some of the Oromo societies was the Kalu institution. The Kalu was a spiritual leader of Oromo traditional religion and the first leader was believed to have been of divine origin. According to Oromo traditions, the Kalu was the prophet of the nation and guarded the laws of the Waka, who was both the sky god and the sky itself. Adult men went on a pilgrimage to the Kalu to receive its holy blessing. Like many Cushitic people, cattle formed the basis of Oromo livelihood. The Oromo myth of origin tells us that the first cattle and the first human being were created together. The importance of cattle is emphasized in another tradition according to which God exclaimed when creating the Oromo people, come forth you owners of cattle. As many Oromo groups started to settle in Ethiopia, they began to develop into a political power which was utilized by the different secular and religious groups. By the end of the 17th century, they were taking an active part in the political formation of the Ethiopian state. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey! <laughs>